Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a profile of the Shining Sarcophagus deck. Uh, this one's going to be focusing more on Blinding Second and is certainly going to be a lot more competitive than the first variation that I showed a little while ago, um, which played much more of a pure and um, with more of the Shining Sarcophagus cards, but this one has kind of cut the, the, the nonsense ones and playing a bit more seriously. So we'll get straight into it. Um, it's, like I said, it's a Blind Second deck. Um, Certainly not going to do the job as good as like Tempi or anything like that, but if you're into this kind of deck, then go for it. So we've got two Gandora G. Uh, three would be nice. I like the idea of having three, um, because then you become less reliant on your searches. Um, opening it feels really good when you get to use Gadget Trio. Um, so you, the, the one card combo with Gadget Trio uh, still stands. It gets you to Shining Sarcophagus, it gets you to Gandora G, gets you to the board wipe, and then you, know, you can try and push for OTK from there uh, if possible. But um, if you open the two card combo, which is just a, any two in combination of these cards here, so the three Shining Sarcophagus and the three Future Silence, any two of these uh, means that you get to use your, uh, your Gadget Trio search for Turn Silence, which uh, I've just dropped down to one just in order to kind of save space. But Turn Silence is one of my favorite cards in the deck, as I mentioned in the first uh, video. Um, one I'd still probably try to play more of if um, space kind of allowed, but um, being able to search this off your gadget trio just means that your Gandora G's board wipe really goes through, um, and that's what you want. Um, I'm then playing one of each of the, the silent monsters, so Zero and, oh, sorry, Swordsman and Magician. Um, I'm not playing Ties that bind, I'm playing it in the side deck currently just as a, you know, and sometimes you, you, you certainly opt to go first with the deck. Um, Usually I would do that if maybe, I don't know, Shifter sometimes doesn't feel as good, but sometimes you will certainly choose to opt to go first depending on what you're, you're up against and siding in ties that bind can feel a bit better. Um, the other place where you might side, like, opt to play, and maybe if I had some more room, I'd, I'd choose to play it, um, is just because sometimes you don't OTK and then you really don't set up much of a board with this deck at all. Um, and so at least ties that bind allows you to get two of these guys on the field but you usually already have one on the field through Grandora. So Ties That Bind becomes just that little bit more awkward because you've usually already used Gadget Trio. Uh, and so you don't really have any monsters that you really want to summon off, um, off Ties That Bind. This will all change soon in Infinite Forbidden. So when we get the, the Dark Magician monster, that's going to be the thing that you summon off Gandora G. A lot of the time, you also might summon the Summon Skull monster because it's a it's a steal, um, so that's pretty nice as well. So you'll have better targets for Gandora G, meaning your ties that bind can just summon the two silent monsters, and then you're kind of off to the races from there. Um, but that is all it is for the engine. Um, trying to keep it as minimal as possible, and then we're kind of relying on the non-engine, of course, to carry. Um, one difference is I'm playing Extravagance. Um, Extravagance is a great card. I was uh, it, it provides great ash bait um, for branded fusion. So between pot, between branded fusion, this is where ash is usually going to fall. Um, I also wasn't playing pot before uh, because I only had one dragoon, um, but since the rarity collection came out, I now have more dragoon. So um, that's made my decision to play pot of extravagance a bit easier for me. Um, dragoon is still a crazy card. It combos so nicely with Gandora G because it can't get destroyed by card effects. So Having Brand Fusion plus the Gandora G board wipe is awesome. If, of course, Brand Fusion resolves, because then you, you've got Dragoon, you've got Gandora, you've got Silent Magician or Silent Swordsman, either one, and you certainly are winning the game at that point. Um, so alongside that, we've got Fenrir. Um, Fen Fenrir is one that I'm, uh, it's, it's, I'm feeling less and less positive about. I think in a going second version, I probably sh maybe Fenrir is not the best card. So potentially you cut this for something better, um, potentially just more hand traps or more board breakers, but I don't think Fender is the pick because you often get, you just nuke it with Gandora a lot of the time. Going first, having it just sit on an end board is probably better. Um, using Fender to like bait things going into attack is, is also pretty decent. So it does have some applications going second, but the fact that it sticks around on the field just for Gandora to, to nuke it is not the best synergy, so probably it's not the best card to be playing. Potentially could just play something else in the slot of Fenrir, but definitely for going first, Fenrir adds a bit more depth to what the deck's end board is. Um, then for hand traps, we have the Shifter again. Shifter's crazy. Ash is good. Imperm is good. 
Um, yeah, you could just side out the Fenrir, like you take out the Fenrir for any other hand trap that um, you feel like playing. You could also play like Droplet, but I've really tried to build the deck without conflicting the Shifter as best as possible. That's again why we're playing Brand Fusion over something like Nadir Servant, just because there's no Shifter conflict. Um, the last six cards in the main deck, uh, we've got Talents, and we've got Lightning Storm and Duster, just to, we've got a, a good mix of board breaker and uh, hand traps, but like I said, Fenrir out, put in something like uh, Vela or Mourner or Forbidden Droplet, even like Ghost Ogre, but like all of those cards obviously do have issues with Shifter. So you, you just, yeah, you, I mean, Shifter's too crazy not to, to play. So you probably just run that risk, I guess, if uh, that's what you want to do. Um, for the extra deck, hasn't really changed all too much. Um, now playing two Dragoon, you could still play three, but like the deck does not need its extra deck really at all. So you could just play all fusion targets you could even uh, so you could actually sorry you could even change the um Fenris to super volleys which also could be a perfectly viable solution um and then i'm just yeah like we're just filling out the the fusion stuff so mira jade Lubelion, albion i'm um, still playing sanctify it doesn't really come up at all uh, typhon and then just an otk line with access code selene the two charmers and sp to round it out but i, I think super poly could certainly be an avenue that's worth exploring uh, over Fenrir, for sure. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that you could consider for, um, well, as an alternative to the Fenrir. Um, but other than that, that's um, all I was going to say for this video. Um, definitely give the deck a go. If you want to kind of see how the, the one card combos work, then definitely check out my earlier uh, variation of the deck. The combo is very straightforward. I mean, I could just show it now. It would wouldn't take very long but essentially you normal summon your gadget trio it will search for your sarcophagus which will search for your gandora which can summon um, and then you can nuke the field and that would banish the trio um, as well as anything else your opponent has and then allow you to summon out one of the two um, silent monsters so depending on and depending on how many cards you banish off the field that's how much attack zero is going to gain because it gains 500 for every level it gains, and it gains the levels based on what you banish. So we banished one with Trio. So currently it comes out at 1500, which is obviously pathetic. Um, and then Gendor is also on uh, 300 attack because we only banished one Trio. So that's why um, Extrav certainly plays a role. It, it gives you some attack points um, by banishing cards and Shifter definitely does the same thing. Um, in terms of a side deck, um, I haven't put one together, but certainly, um, for going first, you could certainly side in D barriers, you could side in Macrocosmos, you could side in Dimensional Fissure, any of those cards are just going to banish cards because they just boost up your Gandora. Plus, they stall out your opponent long enough for Gandora just to come in, banish the field, and then should just be massive attack because you've banished everything. Um, but yeah, that's it for this one. Um, definitely give the deck a, a run. I'm looking forward to Infinite Forbidden just because you, we're going to get so many more options with the Dark Magician monster and the ability to kind of search any Dark Magician spell trap. Uh, it's going to make Dragoon a lot better to access because you can just set the, the spell that allows you to fusion summon and just turn Gandora and Dark Magician into Dragoon for no reason, which is pretty cool. But yeah, otherwise, I will catch you in the next one. And yeah, let me know in the comments uh, what you think about the deck.